All right, guys, in today's video, we're going to be doing a maintenance job on this 2000 Toyota Camry CE. It's got a uh, automatic transaxle in the front. It's an Ison 140E. We're going to go through a ATF drain and refill. We're also going to drop the pan and inspect the strainer system. This particular model does not have a filter, but it does have a fluid strainer, and I'll show you that along with all the torque values, so stay tuned. All right, guys, the first thing I'm going to show you is some maintenance information. So inside your Toyota manual pack, all these different manuals that came with it, one of them should have been the scheduled maintenance guide. And in here, we're going to show a couple of things related to this job today. So one is, when do you check out the transmission fluid? Every 15,000 miles, inspect the automatic transmission fluid for special operating conditions. And I'll tell you what that means in a second. And every 30,000, replace the automatic transmission fluid. And you'll notice Toyota uses these terms interchangeably. Technically, a transmission is only used on a rear-wheel drive vehicle, and a transaxle is used on a front-wheel drive vehicle. But so many people don't know the difference that most of the time they just call everything a transmission. What is a special operating condition? Well, this is a list of special operating conditions. And there's all these different um, things you do if you're driving on salt-covered roads, if you're driving on unpaved roads, if you have a lot of idling, a lot of low-speed driving, towing a trailer, camper, blah, 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 right? You can read the manual yourself. The point of my comment in today's video is, what if you don't meet any of these conditions? Well, if you don't meet any of these conditions, you would have ended up going through this entire maintenance manual all the way to the back here of, uh, before it flips over, I think, is it 120,000 miles? Yeah, it goes to 120,000 miles, and then it goes back to the front. And it never says anything about what if you don't have special operating conditions? The uh, expectation was the transmission fluid lasted for the life of the vehicle. Well, what's the life of the vehicle? Um, Toyota obviously felt like the first 120,000 miles was fine, and then they rotated around. My view is the engineers really didn't expect these things to last 20 some odd years. And so you're not supposed to leave this in here that long. So what my recommendation is when you roll back around and you don't meet the special operating conditions, when you hit the 30,000 after that, so at 150,000 miles, make sure you change the ATF. So that's what we're going to do on this vehicle, which actually has over 220,000 miles on it. All right, guys, the first step in this service, so here's the transmission pan, or I should say the automatic transaxle pan. This is the fluid pan for this uh, 140E, and you're going to have a 10 millimeter hex head type, you know, like an Allen head type drain plug. So we're first going to get that going, get your pan ready. Let's work this loose with a breaker bar, and then we'll finish it the rest of the way with a ratchet wrench. Just so we can get it going with our hand. And if you've driven the vehicle, you're going to want to let this cool off or it'll be way too hot to touch. Alright, so this particular transmission, my understanding is this has never been done. So this is 23 year old fluid in here. So we're going to let that drain out. Once that's drained out, then we'll pull the bolts and bring the pan out itself because we're going to do more than just drain and fill here. We're also going to pull this pan off and inspect the strainer. This particular transaxle does not, does not have a filter, but it does have a strainer and the strainer can be cleaned and reused or if it's damaged, it can be replaced but there's no filter here. So let's get this, uh, let's let this go and then we'll come back when it's done. All right, she's just about done. We're just gonna thread our drain plug in by hand. Now at this point, you could say, well, I've drained the fluid, I'm done, and I'm ready to go torque this drain plug in and put new fluid in. But we're gonna go the extra step and pull the pan just because of how long it's been. This is a 23 year old vehicle. This has never been done as far as we know. And we want to go and make sure that the strainer inside is in good shape and clean it or replace it. So we're going to take these 15 10 millimeter bolts off so that we can drop the pan. I'm going to fast forward through this. Um, the only thing I'll tell you is this technique is you leave a couple in here to hold the pan until you're ready so you can control it. And we've got a little bit of a wider catch pan down here attached to our drain just because the pan's obviously a lot wider than what we were dealing with with just the drain plug by itself. So you can use whatever you have handy, you know, roasting pan or whatever, just something to give you a little bit more width. And again, these are 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna work them all off.
Okay, so we've left one in the front and one in the back. Let's we'll see if we can get this pan to separate with just that. Of course we're not, so we're going to grab a pry bar and we're going to work it around until we get it to separate. So it's just one bolt. Actually, I get one more here I missed. Sorry about that. That was why she was held on, so we don't need a pry bar. All right, we got that side to let go. Well, we actually missed another bolt. Sorry about that. No pry bar required. Operator error. All right, so yeah, she's fully let go. So we can take this bolt we had helping hold in the front out. And then we just got the one bolt we had helping hold in the back. And now we can lower this pan let all that fluid run out. All right, so there's the view of the transmission from underneath. And this right here is the strainer. So like I said, it's not a filter. It draws the fluid in through here. And it, it provides a filtration function, but it's not a, a disposable filter. It's a reusable filter. It's held in by these 10 millimeter bolts that you see on either side. And then underneath is a kind of cork type material gasket. We'll go ahead and pull this guy next. Now these bolts are a different length, so we'll keep them separate. Right along the top here, there's this little line that's held in by this little clip. We want to get that out from under this clip before we pull it out. Gently. I'm going to have to get around where the camera is to pull that off, but we're just going to let that sit and drain. I think a little plastic tool so we can get that removed. And we'll pull it out and see what condition it is. All right, so main reason that we would pull something like this is to replace the gasket. It's made of like a cork material. In the case of this vehicle, it's been in there over two decades. Like I was saying, you could clean this off and reuse it if you wanted to or you could replace it now if you took it to the dealer back in the day in the first 10 15 years of this vehicle's life they would have just cleaned it and put it back in with a new gasket if you just do that then the part number on that gasket is a Toyota 35 339 32010 and that's the replacement gasket and that's all you'd need clean it off and put that on if you buy a new one the strainer is a part number 35330 32022 and that's the whole enchilada 
with the gasket also included. So given the age of the vehicle, we're just going to elect to swap out the whole unit. So let's go ahead and bolt this in. All right, so let's work our old gasket off. And that's going to be a discard. Try to get the rest of the fluid drained out. And then we're going to take a look at these magnets. So what we're interested in here, so you can see, there's like a, if you zoom in on this magnet, you can see like the material kind of stands up like very dense hair, if you will. So I'm just move some of it out of the way so you can see. So that's the magnet, there's a silver underneath, and then these small metal fragments are just sticking straight up like that. And then similarly, if we take a look at this other one over here, yeah, same thing, right? If you just give it a t push. So it's covered with fine, powdery, metallic material that's obviously ferrous and magnetic. That's, you know, not great, but given the number of years on this automatic transaxle, not surprising either. So what we're looking for that would concern us is if we saw chunks of steel, metal fragments, pieces that are hard. This dust is just normal wear and tear over 20 some odd years. So now we're going to clean all this out with brake clean, get it nice and shiny and get it ready to put the new pan gasket on. All right, consulting the unit repair manual for the 2000 Toyota Camry and this A140E automatic transaxle. Our torque on the oil strainer is going to be seven foot pounds or 10 Newton meters. That's going to be for these three bolts that we took off there that were 10 millimeter. And our magnet position, we're going to double check the magnet position is as indicated here so they don't interfere with the oil pipes. So we'll adjust that. And then our pan gasket bolts are going to be 43 inch pounds or 4.9 Newton meters. So let's go ahead and get this remounted so we can fill her up. All right, we got our 15 bolts all cleaned up. We've got our pan all cleaned up. You know, it's not a beauty contest. What we're trying to do is just get all the old grease and stuff off of it before we go ready to remount it. We're going to take this drain plug out before we put it on, and we're going to replace the gasket on there as well. So the pan gasket is going to be replaced with a Toyota 35168 32010. Now the kind of gasket that came off of here, these Toyota gaskets are made of a cork material and the one that came off of here was synthetic so I no longer believe that this transmission has never had service before because that was an aftermarket pan gasket that we pulled off of here. And then our replacement on this guy, it's like a aluminum kind of gasket. Our replacement on this guy is going to be a Toyota 9430. And I think that is an A0603, but I'll double check it and I'll roll it at the bottom. That number is just not really legible the way the dealer wrote it. We'll pop this guy on. Our drain plug. So we got everything freshened up now. We'll just hand tighten this guy for now. Let's go underneath and we'll torque the strainer bolts and then we'll get all of these mounted and we'll torque all of them. All right, there's our magnets position according to the service manual. And then we've replicated that using the bolt holes and pan ridges as a reference. All right, so we're gonna clean the gasket surface, mating surface, and where the other bolt attaches. And this little crossover tube now remember I was telling you that the bolt that goes here is a different length than the two bolts that go over here, right? 
the longer one is going to go here. Make sure that the gasket is on the new piece. And we'll hand thread this one on. Let it sit there for a second while we grab the other bolts. If you notice that the fluid is drained back out where you're going to have the gasket touch, just try to touch it up one more time because we want to try and have that be dry surface to begin with. I'm not probably blocking your view for a second here, but I'm just working the first of the two short bolts in by hand. All right, let's get our strainer at seven foot pounds. There's that one. one. Whoops. Whoops, 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 whoops. Last one. Seven foot pounds all the way around. Okay, let's bring our new pan in. Actually, we're going to give one last wipe down to our mating surface, just in case anything drooled down along the edge while we were working on everything else. And it did, so this is a good idea to always double check this, right? Because this stuff is just constantly dripping out. Otherwise though, you do want to make sure that's all clean and free of dirt. We're going to grab a couple of our bolts that will hand tighten just to hold things in position. Now these cork gaskets are on the fragile side. I get one of them started here right before we actually run it up. here. We'll stay on the one side just so that we can look through the bolt eyelets and see the gasket is correctly lined up. You get a couple of them on, then it should be lined up on the other side by default. Can use the bolt. I know you can't see exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just using the bolt to gently move the gasket into alignment with the hole. All right, at this point, we'll just kind of leap ahead here. You guys don't need to see me hand threading these bolts in, but I'm going to go around. You're going to do them all by hand because these are steel bolts, and the case of this transaxle is aluminum. So we don't want to cross thread anything. So get them all started by hand first. And then we'll come back with the electric ratchet and snug them down. All right, guys, I've got all these done. I'll just show you the technique on these last two. Just snug it up with the electric ratchet. You don't want to over torque it. And then 43 inch pounds. It's all done. We'll give another shot of brake clean, but now we're ready to add the ATF. All right, guys, let's reference volume one of the 2000 Toyota Camry service manual again for some of the final torque values and things that we need to know here. So looking at the service specifications for the automatic transaxle A140E under torque specifications, the oil pan drain plug is 36 foot pounds or 49 Newton meters. So I'll show you putting that on to that specific torque value. For this drain and fill that we're doing, also under the A140E, 
a drain and refill should take 2.6 quarts. So that's about what we'll put in to get this vehicle off the ramps. But once we get it on level ground, we're going to end up having to go more than that because we pulled the pan. We're going to probably be somewhat over three quarts when we're all done. As far as how we check it, there's a couple of different things. There's a basic maintenance automatic transmission fluid level inspection where you get it on a level service, surface, you get it idling, you walk it through park through L, and I'll show you that. You pull out the dipstick, you reinsert it, and you check that you're in the hot range. And you do this check when you're at normal driving temperature, which is between 158 and 176 degrees. They give you a hint. This isn't going to apply to us because we've had it up here working on it. But if you happen to have come in and done this check after a long drive, you're going to need to let it cool down for about a half hour because they'll give you a wrong uh, reading. And you do not want to overfill this. Now, something else that they have in the back section under diagnostic that's worth sh sharing is the basic inspection. So... Again, the same temperature range. They're telling you the cool range on the dipstick is only a rough reference when the fluid is replaced and, and, and the engine has, does not run. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use the hot reference. Same thing. Get it parked. Set the brake. Get the engine idling. Depress the brake pedal and walk it through all these positions. Pull out the dipstick. Wipe it clean. Push it back in fully. Pull it out and check that it's in the hot range, just like the graphic shows. We want it up in the hot range. This is the minimum. This is the maximum. We do not want the fluid above this mark. We want to add until we get in between those marks. Another reminder that it's only Toyota ATF D2, which is long discontinued, or Dexron 3, which is still available. Um, do not overfill. And then over here... Just a little walkthrough about what we did, right? So remove the drain plug and drain the fluid. Reinstall the plug securely. Gave that torque earlier at 36 foot-pounds. With the engine off, add the new fluid through the oil filler pipe. So this is while we're on the ramps. We're going to add it without running the engine. They're telling you here again, 2.6 quarts. Start the engine, shift it through all the positions, and then walk it back up to park. So that is how we're going to get it off the ramps. But then once it's on the ground, again, engine idling, check the fluid add up to the cool level on the dipstick. Once it works up to um, normal operating temperature, keep adding. So this is just a step. It's not the check. You can't use the cool level to tell if you're done or anything. You've got to get it up to operating temperature. And I'll show you that, at least on this 2000 Camry, about where that uh, fuel gauge, excuse me, that temperature gauge needs to be. Again, do not overfill. Check for leaks after you're done. Of course, there are leaks. You're going to have to go separately chase that. But we're trying to get right in here. All right, now let's put this guy to the service manual recommended 36. Okay, done. All right, so what kind of automatic transmission fluid are we going to put into this transaxle? Well, here's this technical bulletin, a technical service bulletin from Toyota specifying all the different fluids they have and which things are okay or not. So the specified fluid for this 2000 Camry with this Isen 140E transaxle would have been Dexron 2 or 3. And that turns out to be the only kind of fluid Toyota recommends. You can't use type 3T, type T2, or type T4. None of those will work in this particular model. And you can't mix any of these other ones with this. So it's very important to put the correct type of fluid. Don't use any of the other ones they have. Another bulletin they had here was spelling out very specifically for um, the particular model year and the particular type of transaxle. So we're interested in this Camry with an A140E. And there's some other vehicles that will have that too, like the Solera. And they're telling you here, if it's this color, it's compatible with T4, and if it's not, it's only compatible with Dexron 3 or 2. And then they give you the part numbers for the two types of fluid that they sell, with 00718-ATF00 being this Dexron 3 type fluid. And of course, this white color matches anywhere that you see the A140E, like the one we're working on. So that's the only fluid you can use on that. And that is actually this part right here, which is... 00718-ATF00, this is still available. Toyota Automatic Transmission and Power Steering Fluid. And this is a Dexron 3 formulation. 
Now, even though Dexron is a General Motors specification, Toyota went with this when they came out with this, when they worked together with Ison to come out with this particular A140e. GM's products will tell you that, well, you can upgrade from Dexron 3 to Dexron 6, for example, which is a synthetic. But Toyota doesn't make the same recommendation. They tell you that you still need to use this. Now, you don't have to use their brand, but you still have to use something that is no better, no better than Dexron 3 on a drain and fill. If you rebuild the transmission, you take it out, you completely tear it down and rebuild it, I'd be all agreeing with you, yeah, let's put Dexron 6 in there. Uh, definitely can't put any of these other, like T4, but you could put Dextron 6 in there. But for a drain and fill, we're going to keep the same type of fluid. The viscosity and the additive package on this is very different than a more modern fluid like Dextron 6. All right, let's pull our fill plug out. Put it someplace where it won't get dirty. Let's put a funnel in here. Then we're going to add the fluid we talked about earlier, which is uh, Toyota part number 00718-ATF00. This is a Dexron 3 blend that's still available. And what we're going to do is we'll put two quarts in here. Since we've got it up on ramps so it was easier to film, we'll put the two quarts in here. We'll put half of another one in and then we'll drive it off and we'll check it with the dipstick when we get it on level ground. All right, we're on bottle number three here and we're just gonna take it down, not quite halfway, we're gonna take it down just a fourth of the bottle and then we'll go ahead and start up the engine and see if we've got enough pressure to get it off the ramps. All right guys, so you can see that we're sitting right around the middle, that's the normal operating temperature on this particular vehicle and we're hovering at the correct RPMs, right? Just a little bit around 700 or so. So now we're gonna cycle it through the gears. This CE model doesn't show the gear positions on the dash like the LE. So I'll just show you down here what we're doing. So we're gonna start off in park and we're gonna to go to reverse. You're gonna wait about three seconds in each one of them as you walk them down. And you're feeling that you're actually getting engagement of the clutches as you cycle through R, N, and D you won't feel anything between second and low. And then you're just gonna walk it back up the same way. And you're gonna do this a couple of times while you're waiting for the engine to come up to the temperature that we need to do this reading. And then we let it sit for a little while and then we do that again. You maybe go through the cycle three times. It's All right guys, it's warm enough now, the engine's idling. I'm gonna shut it off for a minute just so we can talk during the video. But you would normally just take this reading while it was idling, just like we saw in the service manual. But rather than talk over the engine noise, let's just see where we're at. See how close to being done we are here. All right, so remember we're trying to get into this hot range. So right now, you can see here, we're just a hair below it. So we probably just want to start adding maybe just one ounce at a time to get up in there. Now to get to this point, how much I used was we're on the fourth quart of what we started with. And we are sitting with just about eight ounces left in the fourth bottle. So I might add one more ounce there just to get us well into that hot range. But that's, that's it. That's the basic technique here. Um, you know, you add a little bit, you let it sit, you check it again, you add a little bit, you let it sit. If it starts to get too hot, you shut it off and, and let it cool down. The thing I want to point out to you too is, you know, the shape of this dipstick on this 5SFE engine setup with this ASIN A140E, you'll get the fluid accumulating in this bend area here just because this is not a straight shot. It's got kind of an S shape to it or a Z shape to it. And you'll get a false reading. So as the dipstick goes in the tube, it'll smear all through that and it'll coat the whole tube. So you got to give it time to run down. So this is not something like on some vehicles where you just dip it in, wipe it, check it, and you're done. What I found with these to these eight Isons is you have to put this in here, you wait a couple of minutes, you check it again, you wait a couple of minutes anytime you add the fluid. So give yourself about 10 or 15 minutes for this whole chore to complete this dance. But we're basically done. I'm not going to show you the last couple ounces, but I'll roll at the bottom whatever the final value we ended up putting into this guy.
All right, guys, let's uh, pull this out now that we've let it sit for a little while. This is simple stuff, right? But we're going to clean it off. And then what we're going to be looking at on this dipstick here, one side's got the writing, if I can get the light right. You've got four notches. I don't know if this is coming out there, right there. And the first two are when it's cool, and the second two are when it's hot. And, of course, we're doing the hot version, and we want it to be sitting somewhere in between those. We want to get it pushed down below this because even that little bit will affect the reading. And let's see what we've got. So you're going to see fluid on all these dipsticks where it picks up along what's splashed on the tube. So what you're looking for is to check both sides, right? So we're si they look, we look like we're sitting right around the hot area because we can see a dry spot right here. So we're going to flip it over. And we're going to make sure that it's wet on both sides. So you can see it's dry all the way up to the hot area. So we're right where we need to be. You want to look for this because of a false positive, right? So it's all dry and then it's wet right above that second notch. But on this side, we've got some wetness. You might want to do a couple of checks on this just to be sure. But, you know, it doesn't have to be super, super exact, but you want to get it as close as you can. Sorry about bumping the camera there, guys. But hopefully that's coming out to you okay. So we're done. So I hope this helps you out on doing your drain, pan drop, refill of ATF with the proper ATF, checking the fluid strainer, replacing the gasket for the fluid strainer, and getting everything torqued back the way it is on your ISIN 140, A140E rather, automatic transaxle with Toyota. If you found this video useful and it helped you out, Take a moment to pay it forward and hit that like button. If you've got questions or comments on what we did, leave it below and I'll try to help. And as always, thanks for watching.